Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Brave New Worlds by Making McDonald's, and it is for two to six players. It takes about 90 minutes to play, and it's for ages 13 and up. In the game Brave New Worlds, you're basically going to be utilizing your uh, spacecrafts, your satellites, and your rovers to go into distant parts of space, gathering certain things like being on a comet, or being on a moon, or being on a planet, it, placing down specific tokens or basically a uh, cargo they will score you points every time you visit a new location you're gonna get a, a big bonus as well as every end of round is going to score you bonuses for each of the ones that you've landed on players are able to basically scout the uh, area on the board look at what you've got there's gonna be hazards that are gonna be placed down that you have to deal with at certain points in the game there's gonna be bigger planets that will help you out and there's going to be smaller ones and based on the types of shuttles you're sending out to land on these places with their cargo will score you different types of points the objective of is, of course, to get victory points, and if you can score more than anybody else, you're going to win. Let's go ahead and take a look at Brave New Worlds and everything that's included in this space exploration game. So here we have the game Brave New Worlds, and as you can see, there's quite a lot of stuff in it. There's six players for all the different players in the game, and there are differences in the Kickstarter that you're going to be getting, like a variable player powers. There's also additional planets from the ice giants that I wasn't able to place. So just to give you an idea of what the board's going to look like with the Earth in the middle. Additionally, everybody's going to get their shuttles, they're going to get their rovers, they're going to get their satellites. There's four, three, and two of those. Everybody's going to start with four fuel, and of course telescopes you'll be utilizing to see far into the distance in the cosmos and see the different planets and moonlets and moons and all that good stuff. Additionally, you're going to get a Brave New Worlds Guide to the Solar System book. This is actually a smaller book than what you're going to be getting, but it has the information regarding all the different planets and all the different moons and whatnot. A ton of really cool things, including the different pictures and whatnot, which I'll talk about during my review a little bit more. But just so you know, you get a big book that is full of informational, um, full of really important information regarding our uh, solar system. Additionally, there's going to be tokens as far as fuel goes and as far as uh, the, uh, the these little cargo pieces that you'll be utilizing when you land your shuttles on different places. And of course, the score tracker there that goes all the way to 100, which is going to indicate if you win the game or not. You'll be getting the rule book as well as the box, and that's pretty much you in the game other than a first player marker. Let's go ahead and take you down below. I'll show you how a turn or a round goes, and then I'll come up and let's talk about what I think about the game. Break Brave New Worlds and whether you should pick it up or not. So here's a portion of Brave New Worlds because it's so large, but it will still give you a good idea of just of how the game is played because we use these guys here. And to start the game off, everybody's going to start with all their tokens and all of their different uh, four different satellites, three rovers, and two of their shuttles, and of course their character here. And it's nice, it has a turn order of play. Before we start, we're actually going to do something interesting, which is we're going to gather two of our uh, telescopes, which is going to be in our pool, along with four of our fuel and every turn we're going to get two telescopes and it's going to start on our colored side and they'll eventually flip to their black sides when they go on the board but then we're also going to get four resources of our choice we can take telescopes we can take our uh, currency as far as placing down the area here which is like a supply and then these guys over here are or cargo sorry and these guys over here are fuel which we need to not only launch and also move but also land so this is our main currency in the game so you can take up to four any you would like and everybody else will do the same so we'll just go ahead and give every single one of these players their fuel and their telescopes we'll just do these three players here for now i suppose and additionally they'll get to choose this guy might take one additional telescope and maybe three additional fuel and uh, this guy over here he might take one of these cargo and he might take three additional fuel and uh this guy here he might just simply take four fuel Okay, and then after that, uh, at the same time, you're going to be flipping and removing telescopes on the board. Now, there are no telescopes, but if there was a telescope on the board, for instance, you would simply flip them over. If you had multiple of the same type on the same area, you'd only flip over one of your color. However, if you had two here, and let's say that white had one here, you'd both flip over yours, leaving uh, two blacks on here and a single white. If there's ever more than three or more telescopes on here, then nobody else can place there, which means nobody else can 
look there, which is an important little aspect to the game. Well, I'll go into that, get into that more in a second here. Uh, after that, you're going to collect your income, which we've also already done this round, and then you're going to do your action phase. This player can go ahead and start first, so we'll give him the token, the launch token, and he can go ahead and deploy spacecraft. And deploying spacecraft is going to cost you, and it tells you uh, here, deploying it is going to uh, simply uh, cost you to move that spacecraft, as well as to launch it. So it'll cost you two to launch a satellite, three to launch a rover, and four to launch a shuttle. And you're gonna do that by, let's say, okay, I, if I wanted to launch uh, this guy here, it would cost me three fuel. That would be the first cost as well. But you're not gonna wanna launch without having some some of your uh, currency here that you can use to place on the board here. Cargo, I <laughs> wanna say, not wanna say cargo, but yeah, you need to have current uh, cargo in order so you can land. But uh, then after you've gone ahead and decided whether you wanna do that or not, you can also place telescopes and you can place as many as you want that you have in your pool. Uh, so I can place maybe one, uh, two, and three. And I could also uh, deploy payloads. If I have any guys out with payloads, which are, I guess, cargo payload, then I could do that as well. Uh, I'm also able to look at anything I have with a, telescope on it. So I'm able to look at all of these. You're able to look at these whenever you want as long as you have a telescope on it. And then it goes on to the next player's turn where they have nothing else they want to do. They can do any of these actions as many times as they want. This player here, he can go ahead and place his down on the board. He's also able to look at them as well and see what he's got going on here. And uh, he is interesting because he actually has a payload and he's got enough currency. So if he wanted to, he could deploy a satellite, which will cost him two fuel, so that will go ahead and burn. Then he'll take all the rest of the fuel that he wants to add, as well as the uh, cargo or payload, and puts it on here, and he puts it on Earth. Now, for every space he wants to move, it's going to cost him one of these fuels. So if he wanted to move two spaces or so, he can go one and two. And then if he wanted to as well, he could go ahead and deposit a payload. Now, the problem is he doesn't necessarily know what this is. So if we went to deposit a payload on here and there's nothing on there, it's not going to help him very much. But maybe he knew, for instance, that this, this existed here. So if he went one more space, he could then go ahead and come here and deposit a payload. Now, it's going to have a certain amount of cost to landing. Uh, and luckily, he has two more, one and two, which he can now land. And landing cost is there. It's two for satellites, three for rovers, and four for the shuttles. And he's got his one payload here, which is nice. Whenever you discover anything, you're going to get its discovery bonus. And it tells you on here what the discovery bonus is. That says five. So he'll move his tracker up five points. Additionally, he is going to get um, a bonus of plus, let's see here, plus two for having a satellite on there. So that will give him a five and a two. That's pretty nice, right? And then every round at the end of the round, for as long as he has a guy here with a payload, he's going to get plus two points. And that counts for every single one of his uh, different shuttles and spacecraft and whatnot that he has on board here. So he's just scored seven points there. And at the end of the round, he's going to score two more points. So pretty useful, right? After the yellow's done, he's placed his telescopes. He's went ahead and he's he's launched his satellite. He moved around the board. He luckily found one of these spaces here. Now, obviously, you're going to be checking these spaces, so most likely you're going to go to a space that you know exists something good. Um, and then he's done his landing. Uh, he doesn't have anything else to do, so he was going to pass. And the next player will get a chance to go. And, of course, you don't have to do anything if you don't want to. After, after everybody's gone, you're going to end the round by scoring points based on whoever has spaces that are occupied. So, for instance, he's getting his two, like I said. And then you go back to the two phases in which everybody does stuff at the same time. Flipping te telescopes, just like this. And removing any of them that are black, so there's nothing to be removed. Now, he saved his telescope, so he can use them next this next round if he wants. He then collects income, which means that everybody collects two of their telescopes. And then plus four of anything they'd like. So this player now, maybe he wants to get one of these uh, payloads here, and then he wants to get three more fuel. This player here, maybe he wants to get one and three more fuel as well. And this guy here, maybe he wants to get two payload as well as one, two fuel. And then it would continue again. And that's basically the idea of the game. You're going to be spending uh, currency or fuel to launch, and then you're going to also see how many spaces you can move based on the fuel you have, based on the shuttles. So a, sh a shuttle can go three spaces every turn, which means if you have one of these guys out with a bunch of 
fuel on it and a payload, let's say, and you launched it, this guy could only go three spaces. One, two, three, he'd spend his three fuel and he'd be done for that turn. So maybe he wants to get here, right? Um, however, the rovers can go four and the satellites can go five. And then of course, landing costs are different for each. So this, this is gonna cost the most to land and uh, this is going to cost the least to land. However, there's a reason for that. Now let's go ahead and look at this board over here and I'll go ahead and flip over a couple things, I suppose. See what we can show you here. And uh, as you get farther out, there's going to be more hazards. And when you land on a hazard or go across a hazard, you're going to have to spend two currency or fuel to move off of it. And if you land on it, you're going to lose your payload and have to spend two. So hazards are bad, but they only affect you if they're face up. And whenever also, whenever satellites get removed from the board due to the removal phase, if, they are, if there are no satellites left remaining on these planets here or these areas, you're going to flip them over. And so that's how these kind of get revealed. Uh, additionally, there's going to be stuff like Titan here, and they're going to give you that first time bonus that you only get when you discover it the first time, as well as then you're going to have the three different bonuses from whatever it is you're landing on here. If it's a telescope or if it's a satellite, that's plus three of a round. If it is a rover, it's plus five and then plus seven for shuttles. So shuttles are more expensive, but they give you more points every round in order to win the game. And the same can be said for most spaces on here. There are certain rules like Juno and, uh, Dugu is both of these, neither of them can actually have a shuttle on them, but they can have rovers and satellites. And additionally, there are certain planets that have this little gravitational symbol here, which means that whenever you go onto that planet, whenever you land on it, it'll give you a bonus free movement or multiple bonus movements, which is cool as well. And you can also check your card if you want to. This tells you what all the different uh, areas in the game are going to have, how likely it is you're going to find a planet or dwarf planet or moons, moonlets, comets, and even hazards, as well as empty spaces. Uh, another thing to note is there is some competitive action in this game. When somebody, for instance, is coming to try and take your spot, maybe this player here, he really wanted to take your spot, he is going to have to, first of all, get there. He's going to have to spend his launch costs, and then he's going to have to spend his two resources to get to the location. And additionally, you have to have one more of the uh, cargo than you do in order to pump you off. Now, if this was not a satellite and instead it was a rover or instead it was a f spacecraft, it wouldn't need additional cargo because it's a higher class than this one. It would just simply remove it. But if they are the same, it will need a higher amount of cargo. And so that's going to be how you're going to be kind of competing against each other as you move across this board here, maintaining or collecting planets and moons and moonlets and all that other good stuff in the game. But for the most part, that is how you play the game. Eventually a point threshold is going to be reached and that will end the game. And the player who has the most points is the winner of the game, Brave New Worlds. A lot of really cool stuff in this game, a lot of cool different aspects to it. And there's also uh, some additional things that talk about just how the game is, uh, actually so, uh, very in tune to real life. It actually shows you like which moons and whatnot are linked to which planets. And you can actually look at the different symbology and it shows you that or sim symbolism, I should say. Anyway, let's come up and I'll talk a little bit more about the game and then I'll give you my review of it. And uh, then we'll wrap it up with an outro. All right, so what do I think about Brave New Worlds? Well, just before we get into the review, let's go ahead and talk about a couple caveats. One of them being that you only have a limited number of these specific types of shuttles and satellites and rovers. And when you run out, the only way you're going to get them back is if you return them back or they get bumped off. And of course, bumping them off is going to make you lose potentially points from the, the board when you're scoring every single round those basic bonus points. Sometimes you're going to end up running out of fuel or whatnot, and you're basically going to have to return your shuttle. So it's all about tactical thinking in this game. But before we get into the game and my review of it, I want to talk about something really interesting. And the first thing is the amount of interesting information I gathered from this game, as well as the amount of amazing images included in this game. If you at, at all enjoy games that involve space or just the idea of space and our galaxy, it, this is going to be something you should definitely take a look at because not only does it come with all of these are images they, that they could take from the different locations, whether it be Pluto or Jupiter or Titan or um, Ganymede, all of these are actually in, is additionally in these this book here. And it tells you all, you know, all the different uh, Europa and uh, Callisto, all the different moons and planets and whatnot, and you can get a good idea of some really interesting information regarding this game. And like I said previously, that the different artwork on this is also going to be from space, which is a really, really cool aspect to this game. In fact, probably 
Oddly enough, my favorite aspect to this game is just the amount of awesome images that are included in this. Now, uh, uh, let's talk about the game now, okay? First of all, in this game, you're either A, competing against each other in a two-player game, going back and forth, which is probably a little more aggressive style gameplay because you're going to need to be taking space from other players if they're beating you. Uh, but in a larger player game, it's more expansive, right? And the board has a lot of things you can do. You can be aggressive, but you can also just work towards your goal of increasing the amount of points you gather as fast as you possibly can. There's an exploration aspect to this game, which is really cool. The fact that you'll be placing telescopes down thematically works and then viewing these images of different worlds outside of our own, as well as sometimes suffering the uh, the cosmic rays hazards, or you're always looking. It's funny because you do feel like you're discovering in this game, right? And I just found Janus, right? Oh, I definitely need my rover on there. It's going to score me 10 points plus four every turn if I can get there. But how am I going to get there? Okay, he's over there. Is he actually going with that as well? Or additionally, the telescopes. Multiple telescopes on a certain area means people know what's there, but there's certain players who might not know and they might want to know based on how we we're moving or what we're gathering. Of course, you're also going to get an idea of how the board is kind of laid out mentally based on where people are traveling to and how the telescopes are placed. Do you want to go to a board area that has nothing going on there and just kind of risk it? Do you want to just be uh, gathering the information and going simply to those spaces? Or do you want to simply move to where another player is going and then and on your next turn, drop one of those telescopes, look at it and pick it up before they do. There's all these options you can do in this game. And it's cool because in this game, I probably wouldn't want to be extremely aggressive and in fact I didn't like to be extremely aggressive but there are players who do in this game I like specifically going around and collecting and analyzing the different spaces on the board and the fact that it's ever-changing but still pretty realistic to how uh, how it looks in real life because these planets are all moving and whatnot but uh, yeah going around the board is really really cool and the fact that it has the replayability that it does is interesting as well I personally really really enjoyed this game I like space style games and this one specifically is so different than the rest of them right it does have a pickup and deliver type of a gameplay to it but the space theme really did it for me just the way it kind of functioned around uh, i really enjoyed this game for players who enjoy a little bit of pickup delivery the space theme the different images that are provided in this game you're definitely going to get a kick out of this game now is it extremely strategic not really because you're specifically going to look for the specific planets that are the best for you and sometimes you're not going to be able to reach a certain player that's gotten to a certain distance unless you do this or this and it might not be as cost effective it's all about maintaining your cost and your balance and spending what you need to do there is definitely strategy in this game as for how you want to deal with players but it's not overly complex this is probably a medium to a light style game and it's also very easy to understand and very easy to teach you'll pick this game up maybe two or three turns into it as to how the game is functioning and then you'll determine whether you want to be an aggressive player or a more passive explorer but that's all this game is about is exploring the cosmos it's a it's a lot of fun for me specifically I really enjoyed this game and I think there's definitely an audience for this game if this sounds like something that you'd be interested go ahead and take a look down below on Kickstarter Brave New Worlds I mean if anything I'd want this game just to have this all these images uh, it's, it is that interesting oh uh, well that is my dog so outro <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, go and check out some other videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help, and we greatly appreciate it, as well as taking a look at Brave New Worlds. It's going to be on Kickstarter down below in the description. This game, I, I love the artwork of this game, and I love the feeling of discovery, and this game gives you that. And if you like that kind of thing, then you're going to dig this game, specifically just all the great artwork and the moving around in space. Really, really cool. As well as checking out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We do a live play every 7, at 7.30 on Wednesday PST, where we give away a ton of games and play games just like this one on there. And you can go ahead and decide for yourselves whether you like that game or not. All right, well, thank you very much. And as always, we look forward to exploring the cosmos with you next time. <laughs>